Hello, and welcome to Speak, Film, and Enter, a podcast where we review and rank movies. I'm Nate. And I'm Dylan. And I'm Adam. And today we are reviewing the brand new Mark Rylance movie, The Outfit, that just yeah. came out in theaters. You can only see it in theaters right now. It's not available on streaming like we're used to so many things these days, just immediately being available to watch from our own home. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a movie from, I think, the first movie since he made The Imitation Game from director and writer Graham Moore. Oh, okay. Uh, Imitation Game, uh, Best Picture nominee from, I don't know, probably six to eight years ago at this point, starring Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch and Keira Knightley. His mm -hmm. first movie since then. So very excited to get to this. Adam, do yeah. you want to tell the people what it's about? Sure. Uh, the Outfit. Leonard is an English tailor who used to craft suits on London's world-famous Seville Row. After a personal tragedy, he's ended up in Chicago, operating a small tailor shop in a rough part of town, where he makes beautiful clothes for only the people around who can afford them. A family of vicious gangsters. Indeed. And before we dive into our review, just want to remind people to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that you know when new episodes are coming. Mm -hmm. And all that jazz we really all appreciate we really appreciate it it helps the channel mm -hmm. grow and you've all been great so far so thank you for that yeah. and moving on jazz fits very well with this movie i feel like i think so too just the whole aesthetic and the uh setting um i i, th I felt if we're just going to get into what works i felt like the the setup and just the way they present everything almost this entire movie I think all takes place just in his tailor shop, right? Or what is it called? Yeah. Just in yeah. his shop. His shop. So, and I did not expect that going in, but it didn't bug me. I actually kind of, it gave the movie a very unique feel that I felt like worked really well. Um, almost like it almost felt like a play um, yeah. with Mark Rylance, <clears throat> always phenomenal, but he, you know, has done a lot of work on stage. So I felt like he was right at home. Um, I felt all the actors I was were re really well cast, especially Dylan O'Brien. I thought he was surprising and very good in this. And um, Russell uh, Russell Beale, what's his first name? I can never remember. Um, oh yeah, Simon, Simon Russell Beale. Simon Russell Beale, who was in The Death of Stalin, which is a movie that we talked about on this podcast before mm -hmm. that we really liked. Um, I just, it, I just, all of it worked really well for me. I, I was digging the style, the aesthetic. The characters it was definitely like a throwback um kind of a kind of a detective almost a noir story but it was also very smart and it wasn't it was definitely substance over style and i liked it yeah there's definitely a whodunit aspect to this as well we won't get into the plot too much because this is the type of movie that i think plot wise knowing about as little about as possible yeah really elevates the movie just so you can experience the twists and turns along with the characters the movie does a really good job of feeling like it's just doing this constant high wire act mm -hmm. and it never really strays for the most part i think it, it hits the beats that it needs to hit it has some surprising twists and turns and really though it's it's just carried by wonderful performances. Yeah. I mean, Mark Rylance is amazing. Zoe Deutsch is also in this movie. I thought she does a very good job. Their chemistry is really good, especially right off the bat, establishing mm -hmm. that sort of boss assistant relationship, but like a little bit more on like maybe a father daughter relationship kind of a thing. Um, a personal relationship. Yeah. 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 Grown out I mean, of that. They, yeah. They make jokes about how they're not father daughter, but like they do that type of stuff kind of. So there's, they right. kind of have that type of relationship. Yeah. And then Dylan O'Brien and Johnny Flynn is kind of the two young gangsters who we frequently see at the beginning. Um, Dylan O'Brien, I think is good here. I'm a big fan of Johnny Flynn. Uh, yeah. A lot of he people probably haven't good. seen him in too much, but I think he's a great, up and coming actor. I mean, he was in The Dig, which is on Netflix right now with um, Carrie Mulligan and mm, okay. uh, Ray Ralph Fiennes. Fiennes. Oh, yeah. And he then, was in The Dig. Okay. That's where I've seen him before. Yep. He was also in Emma, yep. which Adam and I reviewed a couple years ago. He's very good in that. He's in a movie, a British mystery thriller with um, Jesse Buckley from like 2017, 2018, something 2017. like that, like that, called Beast which is also oh, fantastic. Yeah. So I've been a big fan of his for a while. And I like that he's in just more movies where he gets to showcase the range and like how good of an actor I think he is. 
And then, yeah, you already mentioned Simon Russell Beal. Uh, yeah. it, it's a small cast. I mean, that's basically it. A few other yeah. sort of bit roles that show up over the course of the movie, but most of this is just kind of one crazy night mm -hmm. um, where the guy who doesn't want to be involved gets thrown right into the fire in the middle of this big conflict with mobsters yeah. that he doesn't want to be in and he doesn't really have a choice and he's mm -hmm. just kind of stuck there and how's he going to get out of it is sort of what we're looking at. And yeah. I think the performances are great. I also think the costume and like set design in this movie are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think a great screenplay too. I mean, it's got a lot of surprising humor in this movie. Yeah. Which only works because of the performances. A lot of the humor is just from Mark Rylance's delivery and the way uh, he <laughs> plays a certain line and his timing. And it, it would be potentially disastrous in mm -hmm. lesser hands. Oh, for sure. I think uh, I think the casting had to be on point for this, um, and it definitely is. It's not just like the performances, but it goes from kind of one, like you were saying, like a high wire act, like one high wire situation to another high wire situation, and it just and we just kind of it follows that line right through the movie, um, and it can be really it, it makes it really fun. You I you I legitimately like did not know what was going to happen next after like the first like thirty five minutes, and it still went on for like another hour after that. <laughs> Yeah, it's an um, hour 45, so it's, it's, I mean, shorter than a lot of the movies we've seen recently and does a good job of not feeling fast, but not mm -hmm. feeling slow at any point. Like, it's it gives it time to build, and I think that's what I like the most is it, it gives you this all of the setup, and then it just kind of moves right along, and these high-wire acts uh, that we, these positions we get to, end mm -hmm. up feeling like really quick, but then it's, it somehow slows itself down right before it launches into the next one. So it, it's, it does a really good job of like getting the ebb and flow of how excited you are and then like calming you back down and then getting you to the next one. Mm -hmm. Totally agree with that. Yeah. yeah good pacing. Very good. Mm. All right. So the opposite of that, what did you guys not like? There's yeah. kind of one particular thing that I have that I think didn't work all the time. And that's, particularly later in the movie, there are a couple of moments where to kind of get our characters to where they need to be or to have the plot turn in the way that the writer and director wants. Yeah. It felt like there were a couple moments where a character was forced, the script needed a character to make a decision that I did not find believable for that character. Mm -hmm. This didn't happen mm -hmm. a ton. I mean, I think this is mostly a really tight script, but there are a couple of moments um, like one time, like a phone rings and like who answers that phone is kind of, you know, it, it it's dependent on that. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. like just very little moments like that. But I mean, those, those certainly matter. And I did see this twice. So that's something I noticed more of the second time. That's mm -hmm. not to say that I think the whole thing falls apart because of it. But there are a couple moments for me where I felt like eh, that. Yeah, was not it's a little convenient. Right. right. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. And I mentioned earlier that I, I liked the decision to have it all take place just in his shop. But also that does kind of put a ceiling on what the movie is capable of. There's a few things that happen later in the movie that don't that are happening off screen outside of the shop that I wouldn't have minded seeing. I, I could have spent yeah. five minutes out in the streets <laughs> seeing what's going on. Um mm -hmm. So not that it, you know, not to hold that against it, but it just kind of, it puts a little cap on like how good um, this movie really could have been. Um, but yeah, I, I can, I can see where you're coming from, Nate, but um, mostly uh, I felt like, I felt like it was just, they were a little limited by the approach they took, like to really expand and like maybe nail like all of what this movie could have been. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was a choice. And I think, and I still liked it, but yeah, I think I it takes the that. choice to go off of one perspective. Yeah. And with that decision comes those limitations, like you mentioned. And I, I think for the most part, they do very well with those limitations, but yeah, there are a couple moments that I think would have been very exciting to see happen that happen off screen. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I think it handles this like one room uh, type movie that feels like a play uh, better than say like Ma Rainey's did uh, last year. Um, and yeah. we had, what was the other one? I can't remember. One Night in Miami. Oh, yeah. I'd say um, it didn't do it quite as good as One Night in Miami because agreed. there we at least did get shots outside of the of the hotel room. Yeah. To kind of give us more of an, a sense of the world. 
Yeah. And this isn't a play either. This isn't a original No, it's script. just, it's just the, a straight right. movie. But yeah. it just feels like that. I think it did a, a right. little bit better of a job than Ma Rainey's did. Uh, and you can compare the differences of you know these movies to The Cows Come Home. Uh, I just th thought mm -hmm. it did that a little bit better. But I do think, uh, like you said, Dylan, it handicaps this movie a little bit. Um, yeah. Especially when you're dealing with mobsters and gangsters. You want to see some of that like seedy underbelly of the city. Um, so uh, you want to... You want to see some of the the extra parts of the world and how we get to certain areas, but uh, it's a small it's a small thing that I didn't like. So yeah, we can yeah. move on. All right, what does that bring us into performances? Yes, um, definitely the strength of this movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially for me, the two biggest standouts just from like screen presence mm -hmm. were Mark Rylance is amazing, and also yeah. Simon Russell Beale. I mean, I think he and Mark Rylance, if I'm not mistaken, are two hugely successful Broadway or not Broadway, uh, like, Eng British, like English British stage English actors. English theater. I think actors, they have a yeah. lot of background on Shakespeare. Yeah, and Russell Beale on the cover of some of those like Shakespeare Royal Theater production. Sure. Yep, but just the way that they were that Simon Russell Beale, who's not on screen a ton. Mm -hmm. was just able to instantly command my attention and feel like he was controlling the room. And Mark right. Rylance is just constant, like up and down change of tone and the mm -hmm. way he has to kind of play to whoever's currently in the room with him at the moment. Yeah. Um, I thought he did a great job of that. And also, I mean, Dylan O'Brien's good. So he Deutsch mm -hmm. is good. And Johnny Flynn just again, fine. I'm excited for more people to see him because I, I think he's a really good actor. Yeah, yeah, I thought, so. really I thought Johnny Flynn was good. I thought Johnny Flynn was, uh, he almost kind of steals it a little bit from Dylan O'Brien because Dylan O'Brien's maybe the yeah. more recognizable face, but mm -hmm. just his character is more, has more going for him. So I felt like that was very interesting. And I totally agree with what you said about Simon Russell Beale. I mean, just right away, he's got the presence and you just feel like, okay, that guy is not to be messed with. And I'm like, yeah. everyone needs to watch sure. what they say right now. <laughs> um, and yeah, Mark Rylance gets to kind of sneakily be in the background, kind of just like you said, changing his faces and, his, you know, how he, his mannerisms like based on who he's dealing with. And it just kind of the just it's it's a really like delightful character. I'm sure that when he read the script, he was like, oh, absolutely. Like it's it's tailor made for him to do his thing. But um, yeah. unintended. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't think about yeah. that. Wow. Uh, he, he can walk right into a it. lot of layers. Mm -hmm. Your Love subconscious is making puns, Dylan. Just let it happen. <laughs> yeah, I make puns in my sleep, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I thought the performances were all great. And Zoe Deutsch was very good, too. Yeah, there's not a weak point in this movie. There's just more of other people. And I think those are the people that shine. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, understandably mm -hmm. so. That's fair. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I guess we can move past performances and go into uh, who is this for? I mean... If you, I was gonna say, like, if you like the sting to a certain, uh, uh, to um, a certain extent, yeah. if you like, you know, Tinker these, Taylor Soldier Spy, with yeah, Gary Oldman these, that came out of, a while ago, kind I of would, more. Brainy. I would put this more with like, I mean, if you like Knives Out, it's not the same thing, but there's, I mean, there's a whodunit aspect, and it's lighter on its feet and funnier than mm -hmm. you'd expect. Whereas I haven't seen Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, but I've heard that's like slower and more of a kind of. It's a serious. Yeah, it is drama no, type. Yeah, where this feels to me, at least, it felt like, despite being in one room, it felt like a fast-paced, like constantly intriguing and exciting at times crime movie with the whodunit aspect. I think if you like Knives Out, you should definitely check this out. For mm -hmm. me, in my mind, at least, I kind of put it in the same category as Knives Out, and to a lesser extent, like Clue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like that side of the crime movie genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. And if you did like um, the movies you mentioned uh, that were based on plays last year, like Ma Rainey's or One Night in Miami, I think you'll also like it too, because just those movies have the same kind of pacing and feel that yeah. this one does. So if you dig that, you're probably going to dig this. If you thought that that was off-putting and you're like, no, I want more grandiose theatrical, like I want big, I want this, pro you're probably going to feel like maybe this is yeah. boring or just not big enough for you. Like, all right, sure. can I see what's going on outside the shop. Um, it can be a little polarizing that way, but yeah. And just very kind of a, uh, you got to use your brain and you got to, you got to pay attention to what's going on to follow everything, you know? So if you like that, if you like being very engaged uh, and kind of solving the mystery, I think you'll like this movie. Yeah. You've got to kind of know what's 
what you're getting into with this movie before you get into it so you don't like without giving away your like plot points for yourself so that you mm. know where you're going to expect this to get to without hitting like maybe some of those major highs those grandiose like if there's no major like yeah. shootouts or anything there's no like tommy guns right yeah this no movie, isn't, those, this movie isn't epic yeah it's just really smart <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> yeah um all, all right, right should we get to the stars uh yeah we'll be right back yeah. with the stars <laughs> All right, and uh, Dylan, I believe you said you would go first. Yeah, I'll take one off front and center here for us. There we go. Nice. Look at that face. Look at that. I know, super cool. Look at that background. Shoulder. Super cool <laughs> dude with the gun. I was hoping that would be in the normal shot, but whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to give this four stars. I thought this, I thought this is really great. I think that the scope and just kind of what it's trying to do, the approach that it took, limits it a little bit from reaching like four and a half or a five, but... I I was I was very intrigued. It it kind of sucked me in right away. The characters were interesting. The performances were great. The pace flew by for how long of a movie, you know, for it being hour 40 plus. It was it went so quick, especially because you're like almost always in the same room or a couple rooms. Um, there was a potential for this to really, you know, be slow and kind of, I don't know, boring or just kind of you know uh if the script is going to walk kind of a high wire and kind of have a lot of you know twists and turns and things you don't see coming sometimes it pulls it off and sometimes when it doesn't it can be really like cringy or just kind of lame um and this yeah. wasn't this was smart well crafted well put together much like a fine suit i would say <laughs> um and uh, I would totally be willing to go see this again, just to pick up on maybe little clues or details that I didn't see and just to soak in the performances. So uh, I'm going to give it a solid four, four out of five. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I'll go next. Uh, I'm going to follow you up with that and say that I'm also giving this a four stars. Um, I, I agree. I, it's not going to reach those, those five levels, uh, those mm -hmm. levels of fives, four and a halfs um, because of the structure of it. I think it would have to be an, unbelievably good movie and more interesting um oh. <laughs> apparently they have cell phones back in, <laughs> in this time weird um continue yeah but uh i i do think it's 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 nice and tight it's it's an hour 45 it doesn't feel like it's dragging it doesn't ever feel like you're rushing through plot points or you're not understanding the gravity of the things that are happening um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we've talked about Mark Rylance a bunch on this podcast. We're big fans. I think he absolutely kills it. Um, the yeah, supporting cast sure. is good. Uh, like I said, there's no weak point here. Uh, it's definitely something I'd love to revisit and go see again. Uh, maybe wait till it comes out on VOD or something like that. Um, but I, I tell my parents to go watch this. They're going to enjoy it. Um, four, four stars for me. All right. Me next. Yeah. So we may have lost Dylan. Let's uh, want to hide him then. Yep. There we go. <laughs> um, luckily, he went first. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am also going to give this a four. Woo! All three. Yeah. Uh, just like one of our other movies that we reviewed earlier this year, we all gave four stars too. I believe that was the Batman. It was. I wasn't going to give it away, but whatever. Oh, you well. know. Go find it. Go go watch the episode anyway. Yeah. Um, it. I just love this. I it's really good. It's right up my alley. I love the one room, what they're able to do with the, you know, it's not technically one room, but like two or three rooms in the same shop, yeah. what they're able to do with this setup, I think is really creative. And I also just love the performances. Like I already said, like Mark Rylance has some line deliveries that are so perfect and funny in a setting that's not supposed to be funny. Like it's with somebody pointing a gun in his face. Yeah. Or like <laughs> it's, he's in constant danger. And it's not that his character is necessarily making a joke, but like I appreciated those moments because yeah. they do make it a little bit lighter because it was just constant, like nonstop Doing tension. Gloom. Yeah. It would be really hard to get all the way through. I, I mean, I kind of liken it to almost like Reservoir Dogs in that sense. Yeah. Where there are lines like they're in the same room for a long time in Reservoir Dogs. And there are lines that are funny. And like you need that in something like this. And it's there. It also just is so fun to look at. And seeing this a second time, it was really fun to just kind of pay attention for clues and like knowing all the motivations of everybody 
in the movie and then rewatching like really enjoyable. I would definitely see this again. Uh, I just can't wait till it comes out on VOD or streaming anywhere. I think this is a really great movie. It's maybe my favorite of the year so far. Really? At only four yeah. stars. I mean, it's, you know, just the end of March. That's true. I mean, we're, we're pretty early yet. We've, We've only seen like, few, couple, I've seen like you know, a few movies. 13, 15, 2022 20, movies, something like yeah. that. So, but uh, definitely an early gem. Uh, I would highly encourage people to go see this. Um, it's currently just playing in the theater, but uh, it sounds like people are feeling safer and safer to go out there. So mm -hmm. definitely go see this if you get a chance. Really, really fun. All right. Well, that's a four from me, a four from Dylan, and a four from Nate. Um, do we have any any final thoughts we wanted to mention before uh, we get to the, the end? I think uh, that's all I got to say. All right. Well, I've got the quote, and so I'll take us out. Nice. A lot of guys mess around with married women, but you're the only one I know who robs a joint just to pay back the husband. Crazy. <laughs>